and now the nodules are gone. They grabbed a few. Hello, signs. Good morning. Good Hello. Morning. How we doing? Bueno. <laughs> so we are currently making our way to waypoint two now. Like I mean, just kind of bypassing it. That's great. Followed on the high pack. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, I'm kind of uh, only the token watch lead today, so I'm going to hand it over to Paula. Let her uh, decide where and when and what we do. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> she and Raisa picked the uh, track line last night, and uh, it's been interesting so far. So, oh, nice! And appreciate your uh, help last night, Elias. Yeah, of course. Yeah, That's thank it. you so much. Uh, absolutely. Well, once we figure out where we're going, do you guys kind of want to explain why we picked the track line we picked? And if we could maybe show it while they explain it, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, so we wanted to um, cover uh, around 4,000 meters during the dive. And uh, we wanted to uh, explore the, um, the deep part, but also the shallower part in the summit. So we picked uh, different um, tracks depending on the sediment on rocks we could face and the biology and the geology uh, interesting during this track. Could you do a gauge check, please? Yeah, and everyone can see the track map on channel three. Yeah, that, they did a great job. They. They wanted to start deep, like 3,000 meters, and they want to make it to the peak around 2,100 meters. And uh, we needed to cover for this time period allowed it between three and four kilometers laterally. So they experimented, and Elias gave them a couple of different ideas on what could be done, and uh, here we are. Going to head up the steep slope, run the ridge, go into this little flat area, a little plateau, to look for sea pens for Raisa. Mm -hmm. And uh, so hopefully it'll be a, a mixture of things, but it looks like it's primarily geology this, so far, but hopefully biology will happen shortly. A little more biology. Cool. We're currently at a depth of 2,765 meters, making our way up, like Rob and Paula and Elias just said. We've come up a fair way then, haven't we? We yeah. drove at 3032, I believe, and now we're at 2700. Wow. I guess so. Did we start at 32? The um, start the starting depth was uh, 30,032 30, meters. Wow. That's cool. So, Paula, do we want to stick, keep going up, or we want to start turning to waypoint till? Can uh, you see the iPad screen? <laughs> <laughs> I think there is not much biology here, and we collected uh, some nodules and some rocks so we could keep going to the next waypoint. Oh, okay. Keep going to the next waypoint. Why get that? Excellent. <coughs> Thank you. Of course. Yeah, that nodule field they covered in the last uh, watch was really interesting. I hadn't seen anything like that because it started out with small nodules and big, almost softball sized nodules. And uh, they were so big that. Uh, Gabby, the previous pilot, was able to collect them with the claw instead of using the scoop. So and it was pretty extensive. And up the steep slope, set. everywhere set. else had been pretty flat area Wait, where you could see line. these. So. Track a line. Track the line. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Uh, you know what? No, sorry. 50 meters step. Okay. Step. Yeah, can we please... Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Can we please step five zero meters bearing six zero degrees? Speed is point two knots. Roger, thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, I like that. I wouldn't be able to do it without that notebook. No way. <laughs> and I guess this is a great time to introduce our series in introductions. We're gonna do introductions now. Seriously? Or j jokingly? What? <laughs> what? Why would I be joking? You know, my my one job is to make sure everyone's introdu introdu introduced, introduced, introduced. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Geographical. Geo Can we introduce the person to our side, but uh, seriously this time? I mean, yeah, if you want to. <laughs> See how much I can remember. Um, okay, I'll introduce Rob then. Rob is a. Mm, he works at a college. Uh, doing Fail. Some sort of thing, and he likes rocks. Uh, he's the watch lead um, and our geological expert here, looking for nodules and sheet flows, and that's about all he could see on these dives, although he's pretty good at corals, too. Let's sometimes. zoom in on this coral while we're talking about coral. Um, Go ahead, and yeah, dude. Rob, good dude, cool dude. <coughs> Is this one of those Militaris ones? I don't know. Looks anything. like, yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my name is Maranca Harris. <laughs> I'm uh, originally from Toronto, <laughs> but I go to school at uh, UVic. Lovely, lovely place. And I really like, okay, no, I love everything hydrothermal vent. <laughs> and I'm a grad student. And the data logger. <laughs> and the data logger, sorry. Very true and correct. <laughs> I guess I'll go next since I was introduced, but I'll introduce myself as Paula. <laughs> Hello, I am the watch lead today. I'm Paula, and I am a postdoc at Harvard University with the NCZ. I absolutely love squat lobsters. Cannot get enough of them. I've described over 65 species of squat lobster. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, hello, my name is Trevor. Oh. 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 I am the ROV pilot. I'm very good collecting rocks, uh, squat lobster, corals, and I'm also pretty good at identifying corals. Thanks. Front row, if you want to introduce each other. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. I am Annabelle. I'm the ROV intern. <laughs> And I'm sitting at the Atlanta pilot. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting on the Atlanta pilot seat. And um, I'm also an undergraduate st student at the University of... Um, um, ah, where is that ah. university? Shrimp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oregon University State. Of Shrimp. Yeah, thank Go you. Beeves. Oregon State University, yes. That's and, you have to <laughs> say, and you have to say, Go Beavs. <laughs> Yes, and um, what do I like? Mm, as Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, I like what I'm doing. You know, I'm, es I'm exploring. Yeah, that so was great. that's me. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dave. I am the video engineer. Um, I'm from. Florence, Oregon, and I know everything about all the video things, and everything just magically happens when I'm here, and it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not remember the rest. I'm yeah. sorry, Dave. <laughs> that was pretty Anchorage. good. The whole mag, the whole magic thing. That's, that's that's great. Yeah, and I'm training to two new guys and although they, even though they are now good at it <laughs> yeah i didn't have to get up at 4 a.m this morning <laughs> it was great uh i'm stephanie i'm a uh, an illustrator of uh science books and children's books and uh, i'm from philly and i know all the secret places to get philly cheesesteaks even the one that's in uh home depot yes nice, nice. <laughs> all right and i'll close Sorry. it out with i am elias I am navigation and mapping person sitting in the navigation seat right now. 
and I love mapping the ocean floor. Love it. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <What>? you. <laughs> now I'm embarrassed because you guys seem to know much about each other than I remember about you guys. As long as you can remember a lot about one person, then you're good. That's <laughs> true. But what if somebody else picks the person you remember oh, a lot about? But you had first choice. That's so. true. I could have picked someone else. But you said the person next to us, so I was just doing the person next to me. That's fair. But then you guys just went all chaotic and just picked <laughs> anybody. That's true. It fell off the rails immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I was also preparing for travel, like... So when uh, Paula said, okay, I was like, okay, now I have to go to Annabelle. <laughs> but I think it was cool. Yeah, yeah we should no. do that. Yeah. We'll do it again, and, and, and it'll be a test. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll all have to read each other's bios. Minds. Read each other's minds. <laughs> or that. Yeah, so welcome to the 8 to 12, everybody. Um, those of you watching at nautiluslive.org, send us your chat. Yeah, it still looks like a bunch of uh, pillows that have fallen down this slope. One of the ridges that are radiating to the west from the summit here. Still climbing it, or traversing it now, heading toward the east. Look, the scene of the crime right here. Mm. <laughs> what could have happened? What would knock over a sponge like that? Maybe it was that? a... What's that? A, I was, maybe just its own weight. Okay. And like just a, <laughs> a gust of current or something? Yeah, they get too big hmm. for their britches. Underwater beavers. Underwater oh, yeah. beavers. Go beavers. Go beavers. <laughs> <laughs> Even 2,000 meters down. Hmm. Actually... It could be similar to what Bigfoot does, marking its territory with big trees and limbs. It could be like marking its territory for the Aquasquatch. Aquasquatch? Mm. I considered it being one of the words of the day, but then I knew Rob would have won that, <laughs> so I didn't make it one of the words of the day. Oh, we got a new Wait, word of the day? Oh, yeah, we got to do word of the day until everybody wins. Is it boy No. <laughs> <laughs> Can we please do same, same, same? What is... Is that a... A spongy debris. Oh, right, yeah. yep. Looks like a yep. crusty spongy debris. That's pretty interesting. Can we have a zoom in, please? Chat's having an existential crisis. They're saying, is this chat? Am I chatting? <laughs> <laughs> None of us picked chat to introduce. Oh, no. Chat is the omnipresent being. Has this been encrusted? With manganese? Yeah, I think it is. That's really cool. That must mean it's old. <laughs> yeah, we've collected a lot of those in the past. Cool. Um, okay, can you thank remind you. us at what rate does the manganese encrust? encrust? Uh, it could be like uh, millimeters per million years sorts of rates. Wow. Really that slow. That might be a million-year-old sponge? No, I think the ones they find are probably about, I think they dated one like 5,000 years or something like that. That's still a long time. Yeah. Wait, if it's a, million, a millimeter per million years, and that thing's approximately 5,000 years old, then how thin is that crust? Pretty thin. You probably crunch on it with your teeth. I only do division. Uh, <laughs> divide 1 million by 5,000. Isn't it? No, I'm not even going to say anything. Don't listen to me. I guess divide 5,000 by... Well, it's 10 to the 6th and 10 to the 3rd, so... Tried 5,000 by a million, yep. I should say. We have a very low cur current here, right? Super low current, yep. Look at this little animal track, maybe, on this rock? Zoom in, please. Yeah. What would have been the animal track that dark? I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Um, 
Yeah, it could be, but I'm not sure. Could be a previous ROV bonk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Come on. No, Gabby was down further. Oh, yeah. I liked how she was doing a little housekeeping, getting the nuggets off the front porch. Mm -hmm. Porch nuggets, eh? Yeah, porch nuggets. The crust, just, Chad asked, is the crust another way to say petrified like a log? But it doesn't really turn the, it wouldn't turn the coral, or not the coral, the sponge into stone, no, would it? I don't think there's any sort of uh, silica replacement that occurs with the organic material on these. It just kind of gets coated. Yeah. We must have not done any big rock samples yet, eh? They have two, I believe. Really? Yeah. And uh, some nuggets. And the nuggets I knew, yeah. Interesting. Vehicle's very buoyant. Yeah, I'm waiting to get if we get near waypoint three to maybe get one. There's a little a little promontory there. Did they pull a drop weight? Maybe. Chat wants to know how much we socialize, both on the boat and what ashore. Look at these porch nugs. Well, Rob has assured really. me that on shore, <laughs> I will be dead to him, so. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're all still there. On shore, you'll be dead to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he told me. Or at least that's what I heard. I hear what I want to hear. <laughs> oh. Stephanie who? It's already happening. <laughs> We're already on shore. No, on, on the ship, you know, we it's it's a little combination and we're almost kind of forced to socialize. Yeah, what well, was Morange saying the other day that she can't find a way to escape us? <laughs> uh, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I said. Convention time. <laughs> I said that one of the hardest things to adjust to is not having any alone time. <laughs> if you're an introvert like myself. I heard a wise statement one time that on here, the farthest away you can get from a person is 66 meters, and that's if they're cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, there's plenty of times where we like willingly socialize with each other, like with the puzzles and the... Willingly. <laughs> 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 The uh, like sunset crew sometimes talks to each other. I don't know if like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like sitting together in the mess is willingly because you know sometimes you just can't find a seat by yourself, so you have to sit with a group of people and then you have to talk to them. Smile and nod, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and on shore, I mean, it depends. I mean, some people keep in touch. Uh, some of us are just across the country. Uh, like, there's one of the students on board is from uh, my institution, so we'll, we'll see each other and talk, and, and almost we have to. But uh, I think Steve and I, you know, he's down in New York City, I'm in Rhode Island, you know, we'll, we'll converse once in a while, but if he stops in, he may stop in my, my office, we're down his way to, Bo to Boston. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not a, not a lot. Steve's in New York City? Yeah. Has he always been there? Yeah. How have I never known this about him? I don't know. <laughs> cool. <laughs> wow. Um, I know, like, we, the SCFs were all together at that um, forum we had in March. Um, and one of them, I'm staying with one of them in Hawaii for a little bit, too. So, like, we're not strangers on shore, you know? And some of us may have restraining orders, so that's a whole <laughs> issue, too. <laughs> Maranke. <laughs> I have a restraining order? Not yet. <laughs> I'll put one on you as well. We'll just go back and forth. <laughs> I think my dad has a question in the chat. I thought you say your dad has a restraining order. <laughs> I think my dad has a restraining order. Oh, okay. Um, how long? 
I'm guessing he's talking about the sponges. Um, coated and preserved for how many years? How does it break down eventually? If Go so, ahead and zoom long? on this, please. How long does spongy debris last? I don't know. Maybe we we saw this some debris covered by manganese crust, so they should last. Kurdistan oh, has a ophiroid. Yeah. Just let's do same, same, same. Yeah. Spongy debris lasts a really long time. I don't think the manganese like helps it last any longer. Do you think uh, off your roads ever get slivers? <laughs> like fiberglass? Yeah, look at how mm. spiky Rickies. that thing looks like. Yeah. I wouldn't touch that. Mm, and indeed, they are known Thank by you. brittle stars because they are really brittle. Mm hmm. Um, not likely to get slivers. Yeah. We have a geology question. How might it have been possible to spread the little stones or nuggets so they evenly distribute um, in an underwater eruption? The water should have. I'm sorry, guys. I can't read. A a ten. Attenuated. Attenuated. That's what I thought. The sp the speed and distribution or distributive distance very much compared to aerial eruptions. So yeah. how? Well, th there's a related question too, just above that, it's more recently saying, how are these nuggets different than the uh, nodules we see on the abyssal floor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we, <laughs> we're trying to figure out, understand. We still don't totally understand how the nodules are formed on the abyssal floor. What, uh, and these nuggets are, have a, are somewhat similar, but they're different uh, in the way they they appear to uh, be distributed. I mean, in both cases, they're precipitating manganese and iron and minerals from the water column onto themselves. Uh, but if it's straight from the water column, or is it coming up through the sediments? And for the distribution of these nuggets on the side of the seamount, I don't think it's related to Can we zoom in, please? an eruption okay. per se, where these are small bombs distributed. I think it's a, a post-eruptional process that's happened over the last, you know, since it has erupted. And that there are probably some current features or still not sure why they're located where they are. in almost looking like stream beds or ravines. It's kind of an nice. interesting distribution. It's a mystery. Is that a shrimp? Shrimp. Also, I'm sorry, Rob. Rob was nope. giving that beautiful explanation, and I just got completely distracted by the neon color of the sponge stock. Yeah. It, it Is that weird or is that not at all that's the most yellow sponge stock we've seen so far yeah yeah that's so that's cool. normal well, it's normal to get distracted by it <laughs> 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 um apparently they can get uh, this yellow coloration with time so the oldest the yellow ones like that's hard hat yellow that's a bolosoma sponge a bowl it's big. of what Bolasoma? Maybe has liver issues. <laughs> mm. Jaundice? Yes. <laughs> so back to the 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 nuggets. You're kind of trying to figure out why they're. Yeah. Well, we're collecting settling. them, so maybe someone who can specialize in that. And I think it, we start to go back and review some of the the dive tapes and identify where these are located, both depth and some sort of geologic setting, we might have a better understanding of how they're, they're formed. Didn't we find rocks in some of them, like when we cracked them open? Yeah, I mean, it looks like, you know, they nucleate typically on rocks or some piece of organic matter. So that's like the, the starting point, and then you just get layers and layers of manganese uh, on the outside of it over time. How pure is the manganese? Pardon? How pure is the manganese? Is it straight up manganese, or is no, it no? No, no. It's it's awesome. a mix of different, you know, poly. They call them polymetallic nodules. So there are a lot of different uh, metal types and. Uh, but primarily manganese. I, I'm not sure about the the makeup. I mean, it's probably the iron manganese, but I'm not sure what the ratio is. There's a really good article in Scientific American this this month that talks about uh, polymetallic nodules. Uh, talks about the makeup of them, what they'd be used for. Uh, this, this land on the story is undersea mining, which is uh, 
a big issue right now. Hmm. But it's a really good article. Chat gave us some more info about spongy debris. Um, and where did it go? Okay. Uh, it could last a really long time, and we don't really have a good idea, but the silica will eventually dissolve. And the manganese does help preserve it, just like the beaked whale uh, bones that we saw. But that one, like, you could see manganese on it, but you could also see, like, the spongy debris on it. So it wasn't, like, super crusted starfish. Star. Um, Chad also said, finally, a cheese moon. So I guess that they, the cheese moon was the last yellow sponge we saw. Another. Oh no, the I'm camera's on me. It's for Stephanie's dad. Hi, dad. Say hi, dad. Um, a really, really important question in the chat. Uh, uh oh. Yeah. Would you rather fight a hundred squat lobsters or ten cusk eels? On land or in the ocean? Shrimp. Ooh, shrimp. I don't know. I, I'd pick the squats. They're really small, even though they have, I mean, it'd be like mosquitoes. Yeah, you could probably just step on them. You know my answer. <laughs> and I actually don't know your answer. <laughs> Would you want to fight the squats so you could identify them? When Honestly. <laughs> Um, which, do we know which way the current's blowing, Trevor? Do you feel a current? Mm, pretty much I'm driving straight into it, but it's almost nothing. Yeah, cool. I, I wonder if that's why we see so little biology here. I mean, when the uh, Paula and Raisa were making the uh, track last night, they were a little concerned that this might be a bit of a, a current shadow. Yeah, it's kind of coming down the ridge. But, yeah, not much. But they think, you guys think that there's going to be a better current in that, what did you call it this morning? The, between the two peaks. The saddle? Yes, the saddle. Uh, oftentimes you get uh, topographic focusing. And it could just be, you know, part of the tidal where we're at right now, too, for the direction. And there also is a, a prevailing current oftentimes in this area this time of year. So it's, it's, a, it's hard to say. It's a mixture, potentially. Chat's confused about our choice of fighting creatures. Um, they said the squats would really, like, cut us up with their pinch, pinchers, pincers. But, like, they said cuskills are so derpy, like, what could they do to you? <laughs> Did we say underwater or on land? Um, uh, good question. No one, no one responded to Trevor's underwater or on land. On question. land, I'd pick the cusk eels for sure. Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like the eels are a lot less aggressive. Like, I think you could convince them to go away. Yeah, I mean, you could kind of just, like, punch them like a bouncy ball, I think, and they'd just kind of, like... What would they do to you? What, are, what is the eels' they'd defense? Just, I guess they'd swim into you. Would they bite you? I heard Maybe. on the other watch that they have mouths that come out of their mouths. But they're bottom oh, feeders. L like alien or predator or something like that? I don't know. Lilo was saying something about... It was in one of our highlights, everybody, on uh, nautiluslive.org or on our social media oh, Instagrams. Plug. Nice. But yeah, she was like, they have a mouth that What's comes this? out of their mouth hole. Oh. Like that. Mouth, mouth. They use don't it to feed on sediment, so they can't be too scary. I'm going with the cuff gills, <laughs> personally. And there's only <laughs> ten of them. Yeah. Hmm. Can we zoom on this squishy boy, please? Like, I think the lobsters would Venus really put up a fight. Enemy. And some of Venus flytrap? Yep. Beautiful. I have some one. delta, please. That's great. Yep. Giving you some delta. Meteor anemone. Barnacle. And barnacle. Scalpeloidea. Scal wow. Scal all right. A little bit Thank of everything you. there. Thanks. 
There's a question for me in the chat. Nice. I'll answer it. What are what are your favorite things to draw and paint? And if anyone else wants to answer it after, go ahead. Um, but I love animals and drawing animals specifically in their habitats so people can learn about um, where animals live in their habitats and whether or not like you can find them in your backyard or something like that. So animals is the short answer. Does anyone else have anything they like to draw or paint? I really like to draw things that don't exist. Oh. Cool. Yeah, I like to combine different elements and make like a f kind of fantastical drawing. And can they find any of these drawings on your SciComm page? Yes, you can. <laughs> and where can they find this SciComm page? You can find this SciComm page <laughs> on Instagram. It's the imaginative scientist, just the word imaginative and then SCI. If you go into my guides, and then you can see a guide that highlights my artwork, or you can scroll down far enough and find it, because it was one of the first things I posted. There are a ton of drawings. And where can they find your drawings, Stephanie? Oh yes, you can find my drawings at, on Instagram, at Steph, S-T-E-P-H dot Weinger, W-E-I-N-G-E-R. Can I get a reset, please? Hold in position here. Oh, uh, yeah. A uh, question in the chat on a more serious note. Can sponges slash corals get cancer? Like, is there any research done on that? Um, I don't know. I know that the sponges, the, they produce uh, some metabolites and some chemicals that are used for uh, pharmaceutical research to cure cancer. Oh, interesting. But I don't know if they... I get. I guess all the um, uh, organic cells can uh, have like mutations, and mm -hmm. uh, all organic tissues can produce tumors. But I don't think Ooh, they are the same way than but, humans. like our tumors are. So, so how do the pharmacies do that? Do they actually farm the sponges yeah, and extract same, same, same. it, they or do they actually find out what the chemical is and then reproduce it they, synthetically? They do both. They do both. Okay. There is a strong um, uh, research on chemical compounds on marine uh, animals for antivirus uh, to fight cancer as well. Is it deep sea sponges or just any sea sponge? All the sponges. All, all the sponges. All the sponges? They, like, they have the same common element? Most no, I mean that more uh, the research is um, on all type of sponges. But oh, uh, I see. Not in any particular group. I, I guess it would be more focused on desmos sponges. Most marine biopharmaceuticals come from shallow water because we know more about those areas. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense, Google says coral can get cancer. Aww. They can exhibit tumors called calio calicoblastic epithelioma. Would it be on one polyp or many of the polyps? Many polyps, it looks like. So there are no reports of cancer in sponges, although they can produce uh, some tumors. But they are, uh, they, they support, like they are highly resistant to, to high radiation. Hmm. They're resistant to high radiation. Who studies that? Well, I just wonder if it's like Bikini Atoll where they did the uh, nuclear experiments. They did some comparisons. I see. Yeah, they expose uh, the sponges to X-rays. Oh, okay. And wow. then I study the effect of the X-rays. So when you, um, the DNA is very sensitive to radiation. So uh, when when you expose the DNA to ultra ultraviolet rays, the DNA can have mutations, and those mutations uh, accumulated in time can produce cancer. So uh, there is a study in sponges that demonstrate that uh, high doses of radiation 
don't produce mutations in the DNA of the sponge. Wow. So does that mean I should get rid of the black light in my bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're not a sponge. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, Cuskeel's mouths are like goblin sharks, but I, don't, I can't find anything online about Cuskeel mouths. Mouths. Because if they're like goblin sharks, then I wouldn't want to fight a Cuskeel. Don't moray eels have pharyngeal jaws? I don't know. But when I was really little, um, I went snorkeling. I think it was in Maui, actually. And um, I was young, so I had to stay in the shallow end, but my dad was like, I'll take you out into the deep end. And I was like, oh yeah. So I was going and I looked down and a moray eel came out of its little like rock hidey hole. It was red and its mouth open and I saw the teeth and I swam probably like 20 miles an hour to shore and cried a lot. So that memory has never left my mind. Ooh, some species of cuskiel live in freshwater caves. Interesting. When you swim way out deep and you see all those teeth, that's a moray. Oh, that was really good. Wow. If I had a dollar for every dad joke told on this watch. <laughs> so, could we zoom here? Please? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, Dave, go ahead, please. Oh, bonk. Oh, beautiful. Wow, this shrimp is not scared of Herc at all. <laughs> no. It really wants Whoopsies. to get to the coral. I keep bonking. Shrimp. Okay, thanks, Dave. I'm behind on chat because I was Googling Cuskeels. Are there any type of um, squat lobsters or Cuskeels? I don't think there's any Cuskeels. Um, are there any type of squat lobsters that have been identified as venomous or poisonous? No. There is only one group of crustacean that is uh, uh, venomous. Those are remipids uh, that lives on ankylosing caves. Mm. Only in caves. They have a venom glandule to, and, a, and a claw to, to be able to predate on, on other animals. Wow. Out of all the, out of all the crustaceans we've known, known so far, that's yes, the only one? Yes, that's the only one. Uh, venom on, and neurotoxins. So these corals are really beautiful and fragile and this Ramilocordium. Bridge enough. Let's do same, same, same. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> chat's been throwing out facts about, like, um, the extendable jaws, right? Um, and they said, Cuskeel's not so much like goblin, sh goblin sharks, it's just a good example of extendable jaws. Um, but a lot of fish have similar jaw structures that allow them to extend their jaws, but not always to encase their prey. Most of the time, it's just in order to form suction, in order to suck the prey into their mouths. 
And then someone in the chat wrote, when the jaws open wide and there's more jaws inside, that's a more, eh? Oh, I <laughs> like that. <laughs> that was a good one, chat. That's, that's almost worthy of the 8 to 12 watch. <laughs> that's better than mine. <laughs> I don't, yours was pretty good because it was on the fly. I feel like this chatter heard you say that and then thought of this one, you know? Maybe we came to it independently. Maybe. And Maybe. you get extra points for actually singing the melody, Trevor. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you guys had enough of my singing. I've sang a couple times for you guys. <laughs> I'm done. Done. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was a sound that Herc makes. <laughs> That's music to my ears. Chat says, I'm wondering if the rock record shows ferromanganese crust particles lithified together in outcrop. Are there ancient examples of this ferromanganese crust? Do you know what it, that means? Yeah, I think what we see on a lot of these uh, features, we see these rocks, the nodules welded together. And even on the abyssal ones, I mean, it's, it's like a pavement of uh, manganese nodules. They're so close together that they, you know, after they form, they start to weld together. And we see some of that uh, on the s slopes here as well. Yeah, more blocks of pillows. Big talus pile on the side of this uh, this ridge been pretty consistent going in from these larger blocks now to uh, a mix of the nodules and but it's not like the extensive nodule fields we saw coming up the slope Still at 2,700 meters. Yeah, we're kind of contouring, going you know, a little more horizontal until we get to the saddle. Do we have here um, bamboo? Where is it? Sorry. Here. I missed it. Ah. Looks like it. Let's try for a zoom, please. Yeah, maybe Pathigordia, Steve say. Oh yeah, okay, I see a nodule there, finally. Uh, a node, sorry. Thank you. Thanks. So is Steve down in the lounge just uh, typing in, or is he, what's he doing? How does he tell you what he thinks it is? Well, we have a chat with the scientists oh, ashore, okay. and they help with some ideas, and they suggest uh, collect some samples and things like that. Oh, great. So, yeah, Steve is down in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, that's great. Typing things in. Definitely taking advantage of, well, all the science team is definitely taking advantage of the time out here to exactly. see as much of it as possible, yeah. which is great. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll actually be following in my room, keep it going all the time I'm sleeping and wake up occasionally to see what's going on. <laughs> when you hear um, nodules or, <laughs> <laughs> or sheet flow, you wake up. <laughs> or when they, they hear, wow. <laughs> Do you have screens in your room? Yeah, but it's, it's not working. I cheat and stream it on my computer <gasps> just to... Ooh. Just Ooh. nodule debris over there. It's you stream it from the website or locally? Locally. Yeah, okay. 
the screen in your room isn't working? Well, neither Steve or I have it working, and you know, I never haven't been able to get the HDMI to, to go to the right one. Okay, I, I should know about that so I could fix it. Is that a toppled over coral? Or is what that is a spongy this? debris? Yes. Yeah. Let's, check. Let's find out. It's funny when we go through places like this where there's not a bunch of life, but there's evidence of life. Like, mm -hmm. mm. there's all these huge sponges and corals okay, that have, Dave, like, died. Ahead. Or there's, like, the hold fast um, remnants. That's a sponge, I think. Yeah, that's that spinal uh, cord looking one. Yeah. What's the common name for that one? Is the family name Farade? The common, common name? name is glass sponge. Oh, I thought there was some like vertebrae, something, something. Yeah. yeah. There is a genus called Aspidoscopulia that has this morphology of vertebrae right, thank you, Dave. ribs. Thank you. Chat wants to know, have you found any microbiological relations in the formation of these nodules? I'm not sure, but I know Beth Orcutt came out on a previous cruise, and that was one of the things she was interested in trying to uh, explore. Does that mean, is there any, like, microbiology in the rocks? Is that basically well, what they're asking? Th th they're wondering if the microbiology is actually helping the uh, to create the crust. Oh. somehow be part of the uh, process that causes a, the crust to occur. Question for Trevor, if you had the chance to buy or own Hercules, what would be the first place you would explore? Uh, the resale market. <laughs> <laughs> it's like owning a boat. The best way to own a boat is have a friend that owns a boat. I want to own an ROV. Okay, well, then let's <laughs> vote. If you, did, can, if you could choose the next place anywhere, where would you choose? To a dive? Yeah. Uh, let me sit on that for a minute. Yeah, it looks like some of these uh, pi pillows or lavas may be uh, Trim. in place. Trim. Uh, it's hard to tell. Steep slope. If I could choose anywhere to dive, it would be somewhere with a lot of caves and steep caynons and cool geology formations, large-scale geology. Yeah. I caves don't know exactly where that canyons? is. steep canyons? Yeah, like lots of aggressively star? sharp, large terrain. <laughs> yeah, you can see Trevor always get excited when we have that sort of a feature. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. Would you make it so Herc can go in those caves? Probably. No one could tell me no? Why not? Yeah, I, I can imagine you want to sign up for the Jarvis cruise then next year if it happens. A lot of cave exploration? Well, you remember the last time how steep the edges were and everything? Was that the blue coral one? Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. Have you ever explored a uh, shipwreck? Yeah, a couple. That's fun as well. That's pretty fun. Let's there do the same, uh, same, same. There's a lot of ties in with uh, history of those, too. You get people that are not only knowledgeable about where they are and how to find them, but also about how they came to be and what the story is. And the stories are always very interesting. Nice. So as probably you know that the Endurance, Endurance um, uh, was discovered uh, last year Squid. in the Atlantic. Atlantic. And they contacted me because they found a squat lobster on it. Oh, yeah, look at that. Is that Ooh. a... Oh, a Dumbo. 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 Oh, Atlanta Dumbo. Atlanta. We come back. <laughs> come oh, back. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh we're gonna, it's going to bonk right near us, unless you're zoomed in. I'm just going to hold still right <laughs> now. I'm not going to move. Yeah, it'll figure it out. <laughs> nice. Where'd it go? That's crazy. Where so four Dumbos on this expedition. Wow. 
How high is the shrimp count, they ask? We're currently at 16. But you know what? I'm going to count up the total from the whole expedition so far. So I'll tell oh, you guys that. No. The total of shrimps? The total shrimps, at least that we've seen, because we all know that there's like infinite amount of shrimps. Yeah, plus infinity. I saw that written somewhere. Yeah, it was on the shrimp count the other day. Yeah. We seen no squats this dive? No. Oh. And no other, either. <laughs> So far on this expedition, there's been 273-ish shrimps. Ish. Well, they saw a uh, hermit crab, right? Can we zoom on the anemone? Is this a fly trap? Just I think it's one of those flat trappy? ones. Oh, never mind. It's not flat. No, it's a tube anemone. Oh. Bonk. Is our cinnamon cam out of commission? Correct. Actinostilida. Cool. Interesting sandy looking skirt. Yeah, it's cool. All right, thank you. Coming up to a wall, here we go up the wall. Yeah, all these p pillows and lava tubes look uh, pretty in place here. This is nice. It looks like there's a little less uh, Manganese and crustacean don't see as much of a botryoidal uh, texture on these compared to uh, our dyes in the western part of the EEZ. You're saying this isn't botryoidal? I don't think it's as. Oh no, this is pretty grapey to me. Yeah. How do you spell that word? B? T H A T. <laughs> w O R D. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay, Got that's me. wrong. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> How you spell botryoidal? That's a B O T R O Y D A L, something like that. Botryoidal? There's a Y in there someplace. It's like boy. Yeah, B O Y T R O I D A L. Boy. Yeah. Botryoidal? Yeah. So should I put the Dumbo under other since we don't have a <laughs> Dumbo watch today? I guess, yeah. You could write the word Dumbo vertically like a <laughs> tick mark. B O T R Y O I D A L. Yeah. Botryoidal. Botryoidal. B O T something something. I forget. I forget too, and I exited out of it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Coming up but on some sponges. Spongy. Oh, yeah. It's like a line of sponges, like a little trail of sponge. Sponge trail. Sponge trail, here we go. I remember that game from when I was a kid. What? <laughs> <laughs> and sponge trail. Look at that rock. Here's a sponge. Oh. oh. Pretty. What are you? More Venus flytrap than enemies. A double Venus flytrap. Wow. They, they don't grow a stalk, they're sitting on a dead stalk, right? Yeah. yeah. Indeed. I got this little gaffer over here. Hello. Oh. All sorts of different That's flavors of sponge. Yeah. Uh, the one with um, the shape. The satellite yeah. dish? It looks like the satellite dish from yesterday, yeah. It's but it's not curved. as flat. Yeah. You don't suppose it has another tiny lobster in the middle of it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably does. But these are actually the parade, I think. Yeah, I think so. Chat asks, how come many of these underwater lava flows seem pretty barren, even though lava often has minerals that help life? Well, things aren't really growing from the lava flow. Things just kind of attach their little, what are they called, holdfasts? Their little anchors. 
peduncles. They attach them to the hard surface, but they're not really like taking any nutrients from like the plant, like a plant would. If you want to explain that better, Rob, feel free. I mean, the, the, the biology would have a better handle on that, but I don't think they're getting uh, nutrients from the rock directly. Hey, Rob, I think we're on your promontory now. Yeah, I see that. See how thick these flows are. You gonna take a rock sample here? I think I should. Okay, you say the word, I'll try to stay out in front. Okay. Don't see anything juicy yet. I don't want to make anything too big, just something representative. No juice. I don't know, is there anything over here? Should I stand by Small and enough? Next this will move. Sure. Okay. Uh yeah, are those too big for you? I think there's is there one right here that like We could try might sure. be small enough. Do you want to set up the arm there, Anna? Yeah, what's, what's about 12 sure. centimeters? That, yeah, that one. That one, yeah. the football one, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, is that the shape of a football? Oh, we got the old bubble zoom in, eh? Oh. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Let's no. do a uh, front porch view on that one, please. Roger. Yeah, e even the small one next, e any of those small ones next to it would work, too, I think. All right. Are we good for Delta? Yep. Okay, you're good for arm once you got the bubble on the craft. There it is, landed one of those porch nuggets right there to confuse future geologists. <laughs> How did that get here? I call that strategic sampling, using it as a payloader. <laughs> Have we ever dived in the same spot twice or dived in the same spot as another? Absolutely, yeah. Not maybe out here, but other cruises. The last Nautilus cruise, we dived in the same spot. Dove, dove in the same spot. Um, I don't know, half dozen times. So one of these ones here. Yeah, you can circle which one you'd like there. I'm not. Uh, I mean, I I think this one right here, where you're a aiming for, might work if it's within reach. I don't want to get too big too soon, because I think going up the slope there may be some some cool ones too. A nice job. It wiggled. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, is this Annabelle again? You're Look at her. You're like a pro now. Yeah. Catches on quick. Gets in I like it. Gets in better day by day. Yeah. Little, yeah. little triangular world. one. I like it. Hear that world Annabelle has experience. Okay. Give me a spin when you get a chance. Hey, Dave, uh, can we get an Atalanta zoom, please? Is that a good one, or yeah. do you want another one? No, oh, that's perfect. Okay. And can we go for starboard A? Yeah. Alpha. Hardest one. Oh, what's easier for you? Is B better? B's I better. I we can do, Let's do whatever. B. Let me know when you're ready for sample, Salvo. One, four, three, we write data. This is one, four, three. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look at her go in the Atalanta cam. Yeah, the Atlanta cam actually is pretty helpful. Okay, I think I'm ready for sample. Sample. Anything in this box at all right now? Nothing in B. A or B are both fine? Yep. All right, Annabelle, that's the inboard ones, the forward and the second most forward. <coughs> the small okay. ones. Try either one of those. There we go. Look at that Atlanta oh, shot. Elbow top down view. Up. Yeah. Or yeah, fit? Cool. Yeah, if you rotate. That? Yeah, that'll go. Yay! Awesome. Good for job. Thank nice. you. Nice. Basketball. And a tiny shrimp. Nice. And we'll start adding to waypoint four. Science, is that okay? It's okay. Good. Thank you. 
<laughs> Can we get back to dive salvo? You bet. Thank Bleach. you. No. Can we step another five zero meters? Zero eight five degrees. Same speed. All right. Box is closed. Yes. You're welcome. That was eight five. You said it's five. Yeah. Thank you. Nice job, Annabelle. Thank you. This dive is 20 hours, correct? So are we going to get a second shift in here? No. Maybe. Yes. I think we'll be on the recovery shift, won't we? Maybe. I need to think in my head. In your brain mind. <laughs> in my brain <laughs> mind. Your brain mind. Our brain mind. Is this all sediment that's kind of settled over everything? Yeah, a little bit. Like a fine layer of dust? Like a dusting of snow. Yeah. What's that on it? What is on this sponge? It's possible to zoom. It's a star, I Off think. Off your right. Zoom in, please. Shrimp. 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 Oh. Annabelle, chat says nice job. Thank, Thank you. you, chat. All right, thank you, Dave. I gotta go. They say, so cool to see the ROV intern rocking it. <laughs> oh. Chat, you're becoming one of us. Yes, one of us. Walk one away. One of us, <laughs> one of us. A little floaty Odi there. This is actually a saddle, not just a promontory. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're on the back side of the promontory. Yeah, a little micro saddle for really small horses. <laughs> they have really horses. small horses, you know. Seahorses? Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't, small, haven't seen one yet. I don't think I've ever seen a seahorse in it with an ROV. They're usually shallow. There's something else in the Atalanta cam. Is that another squid, Dumbo? Oh, my God. Where? It was, it was in, the right top in the corner. left corner. I'm going to turn the lights on in the hopes that maybe that will help. I think it swam away. Oh, it's gone. I think it was another one. I'm not going to bring the count up to five, but if any of you Four chatters want to zoom or want to rewind a couple seconds in the Occasionally Atalanta. Occasionally you just see stuff in the Atalanta camera, but it's never like the entire animal. It's like one arm or something. Flash. <laughs> what is it? Flash. Ah. Ooh, an interesting question. Um, have we seen any invasive species? Would Great we know question. if they're invasive? Great so we know very little about the um, species on the deep sea. And some species are cosmopolitan or have wide distribution ranges mm -hmm. when they are in the uh, Abyssal, abyssal or lower, lower batial. Yeah, depth. I mean, so it's very, it's very difficult to determine if they are invasive or not. I don't think we, we have here invasive species and at these depths. Yeah, I mean, especially since it's so harsh under here, I don't even know if it would be too easy for something invasive to just like waltz its way in. Yeah. Gauge check. Great. Yeah, gauge check. Yay. Super Chatter Jason asks, how deep are we? We are 2,690 meters. Do Why you get an official status if you're a Super Chatter? Um, I just call him Super Chatter because Jason's always here. Shrimp. Shrimp. Could anyone sign in and say they're Jason? Technically, hmm. but I think I know by now. Do you think Jason is like actually a group of people? No, we, uh, Jason is one, well, actually, kind of. Jason's one of many people that watch the streams basically every day, all day. Here we go, we got a sponge. Oh. It's a sponge. You Annabelle, I think your mom's on the chat. Oh, hi, Mom. Did you see the rock sample? I think, well, someone so. said to be Zoom fair, in, I'm her mom, so pretty biased. Oh, huh. yeah, that's my mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um... <laughs> Shrimp. 
Oh, is, uh, is Mackie at Grandma's yet? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful sponge. And yeah, Mom, I think we need to have a serious chat about your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> She's out of control. <laughs> a sculpture. It really does, yeah. I think it's another far right sponge. Good. Coming down on Delta. Roger. Give you a little more room there. That's a cool um, Atalanta shot, too. Mm. Oh, that is. Uh, we're at an altitude of like 13 on Atalanta, yeah. though, so I'm a little, <laughs> <laughs> a little worried. I don't know. <laughs> They've been using the Atalanta footage in our highlights, so. <gasps> Yay! Nice. Yeah. Like that really big. Um, can we get a little more zoom, please? Let's see if I can see the like, granular nature. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, those are wow. pores. Downlight coming on. Uh, As I bounce around, sorry about that. All right. Oh. <laughs> Look at that shrimp. Very detailed. <laughs> nice Thank you, Dave. Close up. Yeah. That's a good one. Honest, if we can get good close zooms on anything down here, I feel like it makes great like desktop backgrounds. <laughs> like everything's so like artistic down here. That's really what we're here for. <laughs> oh, look at that <laughs> slope of pillows. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Who? I was talking to someone yesterday, and they were like. We need to start an interior design company that like makes rooms based off deep sea environments. Hmm. Uh, so we can contour or we can go directly to waypoint four, but those are not the same. What would you rather do? Going directly means down slope, then back up slope. Let's do contouring. Cut, cut. It's your call. Yeah. It's your call. Cool, contour it is then. Okay. Okay, so yeah, next time let's go a little more northly. Nuts. Yeah. I don't know, six zero or something like that. Shrimp. Yeah, we'll shrimp. Um, chat did go back to look to see if that was another Dumbo, and we're getting conflicting answers of yes, it was another Dumbo, and it was a reflection. Mm. So we'll it was a reflection know. of our true self. I kind of thought it was the tether at first. The tether was down in the, the yeah the right bottom corner. It was though. not in the yeah it was not in the corner that way. I don't think because I've seen the reflections before. I don't think that second thing was a reflection. We should get Dumbo flap ears on the tether footballs. That's exactly <gasps> oh, what I was thinking. Should. <laughs> That'd be great. Really mess with the co-pilot. Yeah, there's no way this could turn out badly. <laughs> So we have another nugget stream down there. Yeah. Do you want to scoop some? No, I, I think we're good Bleach for nuggets enough. right now. I'd rather get one some over uh, in the saddle area or over in the... Please list the, the five zero meters during zero five zero degrees, same speed. Because we're on this side of the saddle, so I have a feeling a lot of these have a similar Roger. origin. Thank you. I don't know if any of you guys know this, but we are making a bunch of like 3D models of things. Do you know if we're trying to make a 3D model of sponges that could be 3D printed? I don't think we have any like good sponge 3D imagery. That would require like an entire sponge, wouldn't it? That has been done. Has um, it? I, mean, I don't know about the 3D printing part, but we've done Oh, what is the word? Where you spin around a thing with the camera? Yeah, I know like... Photogrammetry? Photogrammetry? Photogrammetry, yeah. I know like Remy's doing it with a bunch of things and specimens, but we don't have like a full sponge specimen right now, so we're not. Obviously. We've done it with the Herc Zeus. Really? Yeah, you just, uh, you, you know, spin around and take a bunch of different views of all the different nooks and crannies. And that can be, using computer models, can generate a three-dimensional model. The funny part about that is... A, you can't have the lasers because they add an artifact that the computer tries to blend together. And mm -hmm. B, 
with no scaling lasers, you have no idea how big it is. So you get a 3D model, which is unscaled. So you have to do it once with no lasers, then you have to redo it a little bit with the lasers on to use as standalone photos to scale the model. But yeah, I've seen a couple point clouds that were not totally cleaned up of corals. Maybe not sponges, but they were corals, which is really, really hard to do because they're, you know, a bunch of spindly little things instead of one big mass. But it was really fascinating to see that like rotatable 3D model automatically generated on the, on the computer from the video. Yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember being shown like a sample 3D model of a seamount back it'd, in March. It'd probably have to be cleaned up to 3D printed. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, you could. having a model is one thing, and then having a printable solid model is a completely different thing. We do have a printable 3D model of some things on our website. I think there's the ship and maybe Herc. I don't know. I think maybe I think it's just the ship. I think we should have a collectible line of pilots. Bobbleheads? Yes, perfect, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Anyone want a Trevor bobblehead? Goodness gracious, no. <laughs> Someone in the chat asks, is it better to sign our messages with a name? You guys are anonymous, so if you do want me to say a name, you can sign it with a name. Say my name. It's a Rob. Destiny's Child song. <laughs> What'd you say? Destiny's Child. <laughs> I don't always say people's names if they sign it, but if they sign it multiple times, I sometimes do. I find it really sweet when people's parents sign on and cheer their children on. Oh. I know, it is sweet. Where's the rest of y'all's parents? <laughs> My parents are alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. They know what I do, but they they cheer me on from the background. They don't sign on to things. Do, do they approve? They do, okay. yeah. They're a little bit confused, but oh. they approve. <laughs> Do they follow your SciComm account? What is your SciComm account? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the Imaginative Scientist, Imaginative SCI, and yes, they do follow it on Instagram. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh no, Trevor, chat wants a 3D Trev or a Trevor bobblehead. Hmm. <laughs> oh no, they also want an Annabelle bobblehead. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, not so funny now, is it? <laughs> 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 I would take pilot bobbleheads. I'd like a Gabby one as well. I, I want a Gabby one that has a string in the back that you pull and you hear her talk. <laughs> <laughs> would collectible baseball cards be better, Trevor? Hmm, yes. W would this be Annabelle's rookie card? <laughs> Define better. <laughs> less worse. <laughs> I would say it'd be less worse. I think it was Remy that I was talking to that he was like, like, oh yeah, let's do like a photogrammetry 3D model of a nodule. <laughs> that would be really cool if you had a super high resolution way to take photos of it. You get all the tiny little bumps on it. You know, all the butchery. I, I'm just, I can't say it anymore. The, the grape texture. The grape texture. <laughs> yeah. Chat's asking if there'll be any Nautilus merch in the future. I don't even. There's no Nautilus merch for the general public, is there? Not to my knowledge. I was going to say, you got to pay to play, but you can't pay to play. You have to come out here to I play. hope you get paid, Yeah, you actually. get paid to play. Paid in t-shirts. Look how cute these and little memories. nodules are. Oh, they're so cute. Little pockets Aww. of nodules. Little nodules. And memories. <laughs> and memories, yeah. And friendship. 
and friendship. The shirt that says, I sailed on the EV Nautilus for a month and all I got was this <laughs> lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Maybe we should get t-shirts. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right, we do. Matching t-shirts? Matching yeah. t-shirts. Oh my gosh, matching t-shirts. <laughs> what? On some of our other cruises, we do make uh, cruise t-shirts. I haven't been on one of those. We create them on the cruise and then, uh, e you know, log in and they actually have them ready for you when you hit the dock. Really? Yeah. We were talking about, the SDFs were talking about doing a t-shirt for our cruise, but then we didn't. My, my favorite t-shirt was, uh, we had a bunch of more senior people and we were just kind of, so seemed like we were getting in the way of everybody. So we had so to take on the I'll old and in the way cover, okay. mm -hmm. Jerry Garcia's band. <coughs> and, uh, did that, and on the back we had all of our dive site locations, our coring locations. Can we uh, please step on another five zero meters? Times, like they had zero less zero on the back of t-shirts. I kind of really like that. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Roger, thank you. Chat says, Nautilus the t-shirt, Nautilus the lunchbox, Nautilus the flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, you're getting out of control. Um, serious question. Do you carry any instruments that measure le level of radioactivity? No, I don't think we, we do. do not. But um, sometimes cruises will carry Geiger counters on the ship so that if we bring up rocks that are sourced from vents, we can test them with the Geiger counter before taking a hammer and a chisel to them or anything like that because you don't want radioactive dust flying around your lab. Mm. It's not really dust because it's wet, but you just don't want to be cracking open radioactive rock. Yeah. My mom asks, where are the nodules from? Or what are the nodules from? Rob put them all here before the cruise. <laughs> Easter egg hunt. They're from the front porch. <laughs> oh yeah, also that. <laughs> Are the nodules the little nuggets? Yeah, these. We gotta pick one word. <laughs> well, n nodules, I, I'm strictly saying, are the the abyssal ones. Mm -hmm. The they're larger. These are little little ones, so I just call them nuggets because they seem a little smaller. They're probably very similar to the nodules in formation, but. Look at the shelf, or. Yeah, lava flow. Looking at there? Sheet flow. Look at you. Look at Sheet you. Sheet flow with erupted pillows. I don't know. Is there pillows on it? No, they just no, a sheet just flow. Sheet. Definitely rippling sediment, though. Bonk. And there, those are pillows out in front of it, but it's not part of that sheet flow. Look how it just kind of drapes over everything. Oh, uh, we have something nice. there. Ooh. Turn the other way. Squatty. <laughs> or oh. hermit, maybe. Ooh, or hermit, maybe. Let's do on the hermit, maybe, please. Aren't squat lobsters a related to hermit crabs? Or any other? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing. What's this thing off to the right? A very lobster-shaped smudge. What's this thing? A little... Old hold pass or something? Yeah. That was so deceiving. It looks <laughs> alive. <laughs> anyway, okay, thank you. That really does look like a lobster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, there must be a nugget factory up here someplace. <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah, Purdue has the factory. <laughs> 2,000 meters deep at Johnson Atoll.
chat wants little keychains of Hercules. I agree with that chat. I wonder why Nautilus doesn't do for sale merch. There's got to be a reason. Maybe. <coughs> we definitely have plenty of stickers, though. Oh, we haven't I done the word yet, have we? No, nope. you haven't found... Low-baked pillows. No. Is it I'm a two-parter or is it a one-parter? So Is there two words or one word? I'm a bit conflicted. I'm a bit conflicted because one of them's a two-parter, and Trevor said it, but he didn't say the first word in the two-part. He just said the second word. So like, I don't know hmm. if I should give it to him or not. I've well, been I think you should, it. as a neutral third party. You should. <laughs> <laughs> um, should ever sh everyone can say? Should I give it to Trevor? I'm not against it. Not against it. Not, okay. against it. not against the it. The word yeah. was a squishy. A squishy. But Trevor said, let's zoom on that squishy. Oh, that's, that's, no, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's easily. close enough. So that's yes. close enough. So Trevor gets it. Yay. And you got it organically, too, which, you know what? Is that a first? That is a first. Is it actually a first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, th and the second word is one word, and it's mm, scenery related, I guess. And it's not Botrayodal? <laughs> it's not Botrayodal. Botrayodal. Sea Little. A li oh gosh, let me try that again. <laughs> Mulligan. Sea Lily. Is that one word, Trevor? Sea Lily. Is that one word? <laughs> you say it fast. Can we zoom in on <laughs> no, this? It's not, not Sea Lily. <laughs> zoom in on this something, please. Distract from my counting. Stocked crinoid. Unstocked crinoid. Unstocked. Missing an arm. Witch's fingers. No, it's not. I'm a liar. That's also it's not wrong, one word. Wrong a lot. Scenery related, huh? Mm-hmm. <coughs> All right, thank you. Um, what about garden? Sunrise, sunset. No. Mm. Deep sea. Deep scenery. Deep related. scenery. Related. Dark. Oh, there's a nice sheet flow, yeah, right? Yeah, it is extensive. Nice. Expansive. No. Sedimented. No. <laughs> it's not very steep here. I wonder, I guess this is the, the basin you were talking about, the ice cream scoop. What, yep. what did you call it? The, well, uh, there's no ice cream scoop here, we don't think. Okay. What did you call this area, this this valley? Thing saddle. Or, oh, I, saddle. Or a promontory. Pre-saddle. <laughs> yeah. Post -promontory, pro post promontory pre saddle. That's it. Say that once. <laughs> Oh yeah, we just passing waypoint three now. Y yeah. Steve would like to take a Neskin. Okay. Um, whenever we're ready. Do we have all Niskins open right we now? We do. Do you want to do that? I can try. Okay. Um. Just be very, very slow and very, 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 very careful. careful. And it'll be great. Uh, is the Delta looking all right? It's great. Yeah. Roger. Okay, I can keep moving during this, so it's pretty low stress as far as that's okay. concerned. And I'm going to stand by on the next no, vessel. Okay, okay. Keep moving while we do this. Um, Let's see. Yeah, we're good. What do I do with bubble? What were you doing with bubble? I was doing nothing, but you can do Niskins. Oh, Get a second view. That's handy. Um, he says one to two meters off bottom is ideal. Yeah, cool. We'll get close to set up with the arm, then we'll move the vehicle into its final spot, and okay. then we'll do that. Bonk. Hey. hey so yeah. for this, I would recommend, let's start with uh, number two, which is the loop. So if you lock the jaws closed, that's a good first place to start. Yeah. Gabby was talking about how it's good to lock the jaws closed. Yeah. And uh, I'll get a little closer to the bottom. Make sure the camera's all the way back. Stand by. Wait on, waiting on me. Okay. The camera's all the way back. Let me move ahead a bit first. I understand the camera thing, like Bridge, trying not to no? scrunch 
Zeus. Yeah. Don't scrunch. No scrunching. Let's do same, same, get same. Get a little closer and I'll follow you into the camera. Right. And watch it in bubble for sure. So that's a little too close. You want to be farther upward. There you go. That's better. Now you can see it in bubble. Get your other context there. Oh. So six is probably the easiest, followed by the loop, which is two. So up to you. Oh, I got Magnum. Sorry, Magnum. <laughs> oh. Just a punch in the arm, so that's all. <laughs> hold on a sec, hold on a sec, stop there. You want to bring the arm out and bring the wrist in. It gets that part away from the camera. Yeah, like that, exactly. Nice. Steve, if you're listening, we're 1.4 meters off bottom. Yes, a good... And try to grab it with the far away jaws and pull it to, uh, out that way. Oh, the close jaws and pull it out? Uh, the, f the far away jaws and pull oh. it away from you. Okay. So the skinny jaws in this current orientation. Now watch this part too. You have your wrist in and your elbow out. Or, uh, sorry, let me turn off nope. the light here. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is very fine it's, work. It's very tricky, yeah. Um, but you have time. We have we're, we can keep moving along while we do this, so. Oh, I should flip the jaws over, shouldn't I? Sure, that'd be fine. You can do it with either side, though. Okay. Um. Eh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You can get, like, maybe a little spaghetti sort of maneuver on that. Yeah. You can also pull straight down. There's another valid way. Yeah, like there, right there. Straight down now. And only a little bit. Keep going. Keep going a bit more. Good. Triggered. Yep. We got it. Nice work. Cool. Nice. Now get yourself uh -oh. unspaghetti. Unspaghetti. Oh, you're double spaghetti. There you go. There we go. <laughs> nice job. Excellent. Very Excellent. good. Confirming that that was Miskin 2? Yes. I figured it out eventually. Yeah, you got there. Oh. <laughs> Do you mind bubble and craft? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's probably a nice end member Niskin with hardly anything in the water. I mean, in the biology. It's like the control group. Exactly. So we're making our way to waypoint four now, right? Uh, correct. Is that the right, one that's yeah. in the saddle? Or is that the one that's right before the saddle? just before we go up to the saddle. Okay. All right, it's stowed. Cool, nice job. Sorry for punching Magnum. <laughs> oh, Magnum's uh, used to it. Oh. <laughs> no, in a, in a good way, you know, okay. like when the, when the fighters like do the, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still Herc, right? It's all Herc. Just <laughs> revving himself up. Why are you punching yourself? Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> Annabelle, the chat says, well done again. Yay, new skills. Amazing work. Porch, please. Gotcha. Thank you, chat. Thanks. Oh, your dad's in, in the chat. Hi, dad. At least I think it's your dad. It's a dad. A dad? Mm-hmm. Annabelle, you can look up at the camera and wave at him. Right up there in the uh, corner. Channel three. Hello. Um. Don't you guys just kind of want to like lay down in this sediment and make little sediment angels. <laughs> <laughs> this would be uh, probably not so comfy. You're no angel. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting sassy near the end of the cruise here. <laughs> Rob's so mean to me. <laughs> Did, would that be part of the interior design company we're going to do? Yeah. We're going to uh, emulate things on the sea bottom? Shrimp. Shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp? 
What if the company was called like Vatroidal like <laughs> design? design. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. That's a helpful. good one. But nobody yeah. could ever spell it and bind it. Yeah, no, you can't <laughs> Google that. I already have a couch that's lumpy and hard, so it's a lot like the uh, <laughs> the seafloor anyway. Why is this one all dark versus all the other sedimented ones? I, I, I like the deep scenery idea with a play on sea and scenery. Ooh. Oh, look, TJ's out there painting hatches. Mm. That looks really sharp, the one he's already done, the blue and white one. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I told him about it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Really good. Really happy deck frog today. Yeah. Just like content happy. I was you know? just not about to say happy content. Yeah, not gleeful, but like not excited, just like content. Yeah. Today's a good day, kind of frog. Yeah. I, and I don't understand why you have content and contentious so similar to each other. Mm. They're like opposites, aren't they? Kind of. I don't know. Maybe it's like flammable and inflammable. Yeah. <laughs> Except the opposite. <coughs> English is hard. <laughs> I thought that was math. Math is also hard. This is why I'm an illustrator. <laughs> if you have some awe, it's awesome. If you're full of awe, it's awful. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> That's early. That's very George Carlin-esque. Too much awe, you go over the top. A lot more sediment here. This is crazy. Stephanie, you have no idea how excited I am about the sticker. The I'm sticker? Very, very oh, excited. yeah, yeah. Elias still needs to pick his out. They're really Shame. good stickers. Yeah, yeah sure. I'm very excited. Should be excited. I should do that after this shift. Yeah, we'll do that. I have to grab it from my If you don't back. do it after the shift, I'm getting, I'm jumping <laughs> the gun and picking before you do. Is that a floaty <laughs> that's not a shrimp? Oh, we missed it. Oh, yeah, there goes. There goes. There's a shrimp. There's a floaty top right. A swimmy, actually. A swimmy? Can we zoom in on the swimmy, please? I don't see a swimmy. Center screen. Oh. And there's the swimmy. It's very fast moving, so this might be interesting. Do we want a downlight? Oh, it's a shrimp, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it is a shrimp. It's gone. Another shrimp. Can we step another five zero meters? Is that a shrimp? Or is that one of yeah. the uh, uh, nine zero degrees? Same speed? Or is that one of the arrow worm sorts of things? Or a polychaete. Well, yeah, eggs. thank oh, you. Okay. Well, I counted it as a shrimp, so. <laughs> <laughs> what did we say it was? Oh. Anthropod? I guess it's, uh, I think it's a, an amphibod. Okay. Stephanie, I'd like you to sign the illustration that you gave me. Yeah, I usually put my signature on the back, but I think for the cicada ones I brought, I did not do that. But I'll sign it. Thank you. Hey Dave, did you find the squealy mic problem? No, it hasn't happened again. And uh, it's very odd. It hasn't cool. happened on other shifts either. Perfect. Nobody else has heard it except us. Could except be us just, once? Could be just in our heads. I'm not sure. Felt Chad. like it. Yeah, it's very strange. Chad's yeah. wondering why some rocks are covered in sediment and some aren't. Current? I think a lot of it, if you see the ones that are kind of sticking up a little higher, they're the ones that seem to be a little sediment free. Mm -hmm. So I think it is probably just a, a local effect on the currents. Or the rocks could actually uh, have tumbled down from above more recently. Wouldn't it be cool if we saw one tumbling down? <laughs> Pretty cool. I'd be really cool. Ask Trevor. I would love that. <laughs> Seriously, I would love to be sub sea for a, an eruption or a landslide or something. Like the vehicle would probably be fine. It but would be crazy. It would be insane. It would be so amazing. As opposed to just bonking into things and knocking them off. <laughs> yeah. Sea floor, sea floor bonks back. I'm sure we could cause an avalanche if we tried hard enough. <laughs> Uh, aggressive sampling. Yeah. Or if we put a, a microphone, or not a microphone, a speaker on her in addition to its 
thrumming. We all scream. <laughs> <laughs> There was current at some point because yeah. there's a lot of ripples. Ri ripples. That was a word once upon a time. It was ripples. Looks do you cool guys say the the words does. organically when they're not the words? Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, chat from Germany asks us, "What did we want to be? What did we want to? What jobs did we want when we grew up as kids?" I wanted to be a mermaid. <laughs> I did <laughs> in kindergarten. <laughs> I mean, and you kind of, you still can. Yeah. And wow. then when I got older, I wanted to be Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jacques Cousteau like a kind of mermaid? Really? Kind of. Do you think about explorer. it? I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. on that track. I wanted to be either like a zoo vet or an artist depending on what age you asked me at. In high school, we did a job placement thing, talked about our interests and skills, and they fed it into some computer thing, and they mm -hmm. said, like, You're, you'd be well-suited for this. And I got garbage truck driver. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Going around picking up trash here and there. And, I mean, rocks samples. <laughs> When I took one of those in middle school, I got taxidermist. Oh, wow. Because I liked art and I liked animals. So they were like, how about you do art with dead animals? How'd that make you feel? I mean, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I would do it if it was more, like, accessible, you know? But my grandfather's a taxidermist. is a hobby. It's cool. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a scientist. Um... But when I was like even younger than that, like preschool age, I had this really wild idea about a factory that dyes poodles different colors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't factory. know. Factory, not just like a product. <laughs> no, that you like could with buy. like a, a whole assembly line type situation where the poodles go wow. down and they like have different nozzles with colored dye and Sounds everything. Sounds very Wallace and Gromity. Yeah, very much. Did very you want so? work in that factory? I wanted to manage the factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Isabel's mom, we really, really need to, or Annabelle's mom, we really need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. She brings it up constantly. <laughs> <laughs> if you could do any other job than the job you're doing right now, what would you choose? Atlanta pilot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> driving machinery that's Trevor's calling yeah I, I'd probably drive an excavator yeah or a crane like a tower crane what about those big claws that like disassemble cars you know what I'm talking about aren't those fully automated are they yeah I the didn't ones know that. That. oh the disassemble or the assemble disassemble oh like oh, in like, like scrap, scrap yards yard. yeah mm. everything I'm that always looked kind of cool kind of relates to like what I'm doing now. I think I would be a documentarian or a uh, travel and science TV show host. Oh, Ooh. or I own my own pottery studio. Those three things. I'd want to work on a on a set of a TV or movie. I think, mm. or maybe do like work in a claymation studio or something. Science fiction writer. Oh, Very cool. Ooh. nice. I love science fiction books. Me too. <laughs> Is this one of your parents? Um, Responding to Annabelle, did you have another idea involving Pomeranians? Or yes, is that that, that, I think that's my mom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the Pomeranian one. <laughs> she said she had another horrifying idea involving Pomeranians. 
<laughs> I'm not going to talk about that one. <laughs> that something we'd like yeah. to broadcast okay. to thousands of people. I don't think the internet needs to know about that one. It is great. I love having moms in the chat because, you know, bring up all the embarrassing <laughs> things from childhood. This is wonderful. Yeah. And Annabelle's dad, my number is 401. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the chat said at one point they wanted to be a rodeo clown. Oh yeah, how'd that go? How'd that go, chat? <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw a rodeo and saw the clowns, I thought that was a pretty cool thing. It was, you know, as a kid. Yeah. But I wanted to be a clown. I always wanted to be a clown. Did you ever do it? Um, no, not really. I did teach myself how to juggle. Uh, and I do goofy things for my grandkids. Uh, make faces and do <laughs> sock puppets. And, hey, and well, don't let your dreams stay dreams. <laughs> you can do anything you put your mind to. There you go. <laughs> oh, these are great ripples here. Um, all right, we have more serious questions. How old are these rocks? No. Uh, my best guess is anywhere between 50 and 80 million years. Probably. He's less than another five zero meters. Closer to the uh, 80 million zero years. Nine zero mm -hmm. degrees. Same speed. And another question. Roger. How permanent are the currents? Are there any seasonalities? I love that question. I mean, do we actually do have? Uh, pretty good global models of circulation and they're three-dimensional and through time. It's a HICOM, H-Y-C-O-M, hybrid circulation models. And uh, you can actually, they use real data to, to create those. They do hindcasts and forecasts. And I did that for the, our previous crews, trying to see how the, well the model predicted. And uh, the problem is, and there is a seasonality to it, uh, but what I was finding is the time scale I was looking at didn't include tides. And I think that there are some tidal relationships, you know, on a 24 hour or 12 hour cycle here that has some impact that I'm not, I didn't see in my models. But so I think there are different scales. There's a, like a 12 hour, 24 hour, and there may be a spring neat, you know, monthly soda character, fortnightly, and as well as an annual and even longer decadal time scale sort of changes. In Um, another question, can you, can you do an Antarctic expedition? Have we ever done anything, or will we ever do anything in the Antarctic? I know there's other vessels that go down there, and there's other programs that do Antarctic exploration, but... There are several people on board that have worked in Antarctica. Yeah. I I'm going to, I'm going to try well. to do it too. Cool. I want to see the penguins. <laughs> Someone asked, how long will it take to know as much about the area of the deep sea as we know about the surface of the moon? Do we know more about the surface of the moon than the deep sea? We, we definitely yeah. do. I feel like it's because we can see the moon on a regular basis. Well, the, visual the, creatures. The, the water gets in the way of the normal ways of see these things. Yeah. So the moon we've mapped pretty well with uh, orbiting satellites and, and different instruments and uh, placing landers do some exploration. The ocean, I mean, I think some of the predictions are by like 2030. They want to have it completely mapped. And I think the present estimate is about 20%. But then there's also getting down and close like we are. To, to look at these example these things which you know the amount of area we're covering it's taking a lot of time to do these things but there's just so much to explore which makes mm -hmm. it for fun career potential what resolution does the ocean floor have to be mapped to to be considered mapped I mean, it, it that depends on the water depth like is it a percentage of water depth yeah so about one to five percent okay and yeah. if it's greater than that, if it's like... Yeah, that means you have to come closer to the seafloor to have... I see. Yeah. But like if you are using the sheet, like just like th this vessel, 
then it has to be like one to five percent and what, of the water depth. What percent of the water depth do we get with uh, satellite knowledge, whatever that's called? That's like hundred percent water depth, plus minus a thousand meters. Um, let me let me think about that yeah. because it's like that resolution. It's in kilometers. Right. Yeah. So it's really low resolution. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think it's about you know I think it's it's about ten kilometer resolution from yeah. from space. Whereas we get about 100 meter, or I guess it depends on the depth, of course. But yeah. Yeah, and for satellite, it depends a little bit on water depth, too. Mm -hmm. In the coastal sure. areas, it's, you know, much better resolution than the deep ocean. I'm thinking deep ocean is about 9, 10 kilometers, I think, the last. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay. Cool. So basically, at this depth, we're averaging uh, an area over about a a soccer pitch or football field to get one data point. So you kind of see we're kind of averaging if we're mapping from the surface. And, surpri and surprisingly, we have not as much bathymetric data on the continental margins, like the Atlantic, you know, continental margin as we do in the deep ocean. Mm, yeah. I mean, we have soundings from uh, NOAA and things like that. Yeah. But it's not actually mapped with multi beam because it's so shallow, it takes so much work it, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Shallow waters are, they are really difficult to map. So, what we do is to use LIDAR sometimes, you know. Yeah, fly, fly LIDAR. That's, that works best because with multi beam, like, you are just going to sleep there forever because your, your sword is so small, so small that, you know. Yeah. I know they're looking at the ASVs. Are you at University of New Hampshire? Is that yeah, right? Yeah. So are you familiar with the USV? Yes, ASV yeah, project yeah, there? yeah, we use we use those to, to yeah. map shallow water. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really neat. And it, like that is really coming up a lot now too. So like, you know mm -hmm. technology is, you know, is evolving and they are developing a lot of all those ASVs and people are using them. So Yeah, let's see what happens by twenty thirty. What do you think? I think it's an ambitious goal, but <laughs> if we don't get there, we'll be close. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, zoom in here, please. There's a lot of ocean. There's a lot of ocean. Anemone. Yeah, those bases are great. Another relicanthus. Thank you. Actinostilia. It's not yellow. Okay, thank bottom. you. Oops, that's the wrong button. Chad asked if I would eat a penguin. If it was offered <laughs> to me, maybe. Would Ooh. you? What a funny <laughs> question. Well, yeah. I thought science was about licking it, not eating it. Would you lick a penguin? <laughs> I have a feeling it's someone that knew me because, um, I tried puffin once, and they're one of my favorite animals. Hmm. To eat, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, alive, but I wanted to taste To eat it. alive? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <And about that's> brutal. <laughs> Stop causing rumors. <laughs> You're confusing in puffin and Pomeranian, Annabelle. <laughs> 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 Rob's <laughs> causing rumors. Eating live Pomeranians, <laughs> licking live Pomeranians. Wait, that's a little less bad. Uh, how deep can Hercules go, and what's the deepest dive you've gone on? Hercules can go 4,000 meters, and what we've gone to like 3,000 something something. 3,950. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that's, that's so close. close to the limit. Yeah. Was that a scary? What was that? Scary? Yes. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah, if you guys slipped and fell down a hill. <laughs> Whoops! I'll be over. <laughs> Undersea banana peel. Like. <laughs> I dropped my hat. Let me just. Oh. Kind of thing happens with scuba diving. You follow a fish or something, and then before you know it, you're way deeper than you're supposed to be. Bleach you know. Cool. 
Coral, can we please step another five zero meters bearing one zero zero degrees, same speed? Back to the mapping talk at the Zoom in, please. at the current Roger, rate, thank you. At the current rate with the current technology, how long would it take to map the entire seafloor? So sorry, can you come back to that question again? Yeah, it said with the current technology, how long would it take to map the seafloor, the entire seafloor? Nodes. Bamboo. <laughs> Thank you, Kamal. Well, I mean, Back the Seabed 2030 goal is to map it, like, you know, to have everything mapped by 2030, which we think, I mean, personally, I think it's an ambitious goal, so, but... Yeah, I think it also, it's more so than technology, it's about, like, resources, both, like, human resources and, like, monetary resources and time. Yeah. And um, I, I also think shrimp, all these um, the USVs like this uh, this autonomous tech, it's kind of a multiplier like you know if, like effect because instead of using just like the the Nautilus, I think there was this calculation that was done that if you use if you try to use a ship, it would take about maybe one thousand years or something like that before we can completely map the old like old uh, sea floor. Mm -hmm. But that's for one ship, right? Yeah, for one ship. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, put that in perspective. So, with um, all these USBs, like, so hopefully we'll see what happens by 2030. I can't say for sure this is when I think we'll, like, we'll be done mapping it, but we'll see. Are there um, AUVs that do C4 mapping? Yeah. Yeah, we have the, the Drix was supposed to come on this, um, I think, cruise. But that's right. I, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the surface vessel, yeah. Yeah. And we have the ones that can go closer to the seabed, like, you know, for higher resolution, like, you know, for higher resolution. I wonder if it will, will get really close to mapping the sea, f the whole seafloor, but then slow down because there's all these, like, discontinuous gaps. You know, we all, I know we talk about filling in gaps, which is great, but uh, a lot of times it's do a line there and then do a line over here and you're covering ground, but you're leaving all these little nuggets of not map spaces yeah not next to each other yeah i mean that's when we get there we'll figure that out <laughs> and then we're not yeah. mapping the caves or any of the you know we gotta go in the caves to map both yeah it's two and a half d not three d yeah right. i think that's the term um beyond running out of tether or onboard components of technology, what are the limiting factors of Herc? Driver. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm for depth. Uh, not running at an umbilical, that's not a limiting factor. We have a 7,000 meter umbilical. Oh, oh. wow. Because uh, Little Herc is rated at oh, 6,000 meters, true, so we yeah, want to yeah. be able to do that, which hopefully will be coming up on the next cruise. So what is Herc's limiting factor? Uh, many of the components are designed to only withstand the ocean pressure of 4,000 meters, so about 6,000 psi. So you keep uh, keep the water out of the air-filled areas by having really strong titanium or stainless housings. Or, for example, the foam was made of a bunch of tiny little glass spheres full of air to add buoyancy mm -hmm. or to be buoyant. Uh, those are designed to a s withstand a certain external pressure before they will implode. So there's some safety margin in there, of course. Like, I bet if we went to 4,100 meters, everything would be fine. But I am not about to find out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want to take that risk. <laughs> no. What about Atalanta? What could that go down to? Atalanta can go deeper, right? Yeah, 6,000. 6,000? Mm hmm. That will be on the Little Herc Atlanta dive next cruise. Again, weather pending, weather dependent, but I think they're planning to go planning to go greater than 5,000. I'm not sure exactly how deep they're looking at, but 5,500, I want to say. And the Where is that? Where is that location? I'm not sure. Okay. And the glass spheres were part of the yellow syntactic foam, right? They're Yeah, they're really, really, really small. So are those titanium housings, are they, they filled with uh, fluid or just air? The titanium ones are filled with air. Those hold all the computer components that are not able to see ocean pressure. Yeah. And you see on the 
sides of the vehicles, there's also oil-filled junction boxes. Yeah. And the oil just keeps the water out, but does not keep the pressure out. Yeah. So how much do these shrink or change size with the depth down here? The titanium housings? Yeah. Uh, negligibly, they're pretty yeah. rigid. Hopefully okay. they don't. Yeah, well, I mean, they will a little bit, but I don't know. Probably less than 1%. I don't know the answer okay. to that, though. I'm guessing. Yeah, just because I know with Alvin, it, it did uh, compress, create yeah. these micro fractures. Right. And the key thing is the way you secure dissimilar materials together. So okay. titanium will compress at a different rate than foam will, different than aluminum. All these things will compress at different rates. So if you secure things uh, in a way that one compresses faster than the other, then there's going to be internal stresses and cause fractures and stuff. Yeah, this is mostly pillows and lava tubes on this slope. Look like they're in place, but a little sedimented. Um... Chat wants to know what is Little Herc. Baby, you don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Herc quit small. Inspection only. It's got room for a camera. No sampling capabilities. So no arms. No boxes. No Niskins. No none of that stuff. It's just a fancy camera with a bunch of lights and thrusters. You betcha. Oh boy, does it have thrusters? <laughs> <laughs> uh, has little Herc have a CTD. Uh, I think it has the capability to have one, but not as standard equipment. Oh, okay. And you said that one might be on the next cruise? Yes, and that, that's the plan. But because 5,500 meters is so deep, the limiting factor on that is wire tension on the 6-8 cable, which means strong weather can prevent a dive very quickly. So. Someone kind of said that in the chat. <laughs> Nice. Well, they got the right answer. Yeah, that's going to be the limiting factor on whether we see that dive happen next cruise or not. We hope that there will be a weather window in there that it can happen. But of course, you know how weather works. What type of weather would it be like? Wind? Uh, big wave. Any large weather. Large swell, large short waves, uh, short period waves, or big wind can all cause the ship to move fast and aggressively enough that it causes tension spikes. So you're not only dealing with the, the reason deeper is different, is you're not only dealing with the weight of Atalanta, but also the weight of the thousands of meters of cable. You know, it's 0.68 of an inch times, well, 5,000 meters. So that's a large amount of actual size. It seems so small when you just look at a cross section, but when you think of the huge distance, it's it's a lot of, a lot of material there. Science. Should we start adding to point five or still make it to? Yeah. Waypoint five. Waypoint five. Point five. Yep. We're making uh, really good time without any biology and zooms here. I want to go in the <laughs> saddle. So, uh, Raisa may be able to get into her sedimented pond a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to believe biologists picked this I track. Know. I had an eye on the clock. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just happened to Doing look and it was eight now. seconds past. <laughs> like, I'm going to forget if I don't say it now. <laughs> Can we please step five zero meters bearing zero nine zero I like degrees. the charades, though. Same speed. Mix it up a bit. Roger. Thank you.